So you believe Jesus no, called Allah Allah? To in the Bible, Jesus calls God the Father, not Allah. But do you know what God is in Aramaic? Ilaha. Huh? Ilaha. Ilaha. Allah. Yes. yes. No, 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 no. Even if that wasn't in the text, you would still have good reason to believe like, oh, it could just be a hallucination. Like it's not a strong argument from the text to say, oh, the text said the prophet was affected by black magic. Therefore, this text is possibly from black magic. There were things they may have, you know, mistranslated, may have forgot to write something. The message of Christ, the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ has never been changed. There is proof. There's no proof the in history, right, yeah. that Islam was there before 600 AD. So what was the message before then? Sorry, but what's the question? There's no such thing as being Muslim. Muslims think worship the Prophet. The Kaaba. The, the Prophet. I believe Muslims worship the Kaaba and Muhammad. What, what is uh, it based on that Muslims worship the Prophet? I just see how, so obviously it, it may not be written in your Quran, right? But I've seen it in like Molids. You know what Molids is? Sure, yeah. Bethans. I've seen them like worship Muhammad, would give him and greetings Muhammad. with like, you know, like they would literally like pray to him. Go to, I go to Medina, I see people worshiping Muhammad, like praying to him, like begging I, I think for forgiveness and everything. The thing is that he asks God on, on, his behalf, on their behalf, mm. right? Like even in the prayer when we say like, at the we're saying, peace be upon you, O Prophet, it's a prayer to God. And then it says, and upon all the righteous. And even though we pray sincerely only to God, in a prayer, you can make whatever supplication you want. No, but that's, 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 Allah, that's during your dua. So, typical right? Muslim Salah, which is only for Allah. When you do your namaz, that's for Allah. Yeah. But Allah, Allah, for Allah, Allah says, Allah. do not associate anybody with Him in worship. And when you are doing Atayyatul Lillahi, that's during your Salah, when you're only meant to do it for Allah. So we but can see an association there with Muhammad and Allah. I mean, we do so many things in prayer, right? Yeah, we but the devil likes to deceive you, so, but you don't realize it. No, but you think it's okay, a, but it's not. It's not okay. All I'm saying is, you're trying to make a logical claim, right? That prayer is only for God, but within it you incorporate Aspects of other things, but it's not limited to the prophet. You can pray for, in fact, you're obviously you can pray, pray for, for people, for... but when they are dead, you shouldn't do that because that's necromancy. Yeah. No, but I'm saying that's, that's like a claim on your part, right? A theological system only has to be internally coherent, it doesn't have to be externally coherent. Like, it's a strange argument to say Islam is wrong because so how do how do how do I know Muhammad's right? alive though? I don't know if he's alive or not. No, that's why I think the system only needs yeah. to be uh, inherently coherent, right? Like internally. Okay. So for example, you have to have you have to look at the extent of Islam. You can't just no, look I'm at the Quran. Like, if I have a Canadian legal system, yeah. and someone's like it's wrong by American law, it's like yeah, it's an, it's an internal system, right? So according to but us, you have to look at external and internal. You can't, yeah, yeah. But for, saying, for religion, you can't just look at the Bible. I have to look at external sources. What the no, what I mean is that not everything can be externally validated. Like, can you prove the existence of the external world? It's philosophically impossible, right? To prove the existence of the external world to begin with. But can you, can you, so it's the same thing, but can, can you, you can prove you, the existence of angels, like with any kind of empirical methods? No, no, right? obviously, it's a, it's you, can't, you can't prove your way for like certain yeah. theological aspects of the Exactly, you know, so that's science. what I'm saying. Like, our belief that the Prophet is alive is a subsidiary of our theological base, which is... So how do, you, how, how do you know this Prophet is truly alive? How do you know he was a true man? I would say that once you have the theological basis of the religion of like we're not going to debate like the existence of God, so to speak, right? Me and you, because yeah. we have a commonality in belief. Insofar as somebody believes that God is true, and they have, let's say, good reasons for believing the Quran is true, then everything that's subsidiary to that is natural. It doesn't need like external sourcing necessarily. That's right. Like I can believe angels exist, even if somebody says, "Well, you don't have external sourcing," mm. right? But you know, Muhammad. So, but the things I can't trust about him. Right, because what like, I'm not trying to debate you. I know, but the thing I want to mention to you with Muhammad, the things we can't, I can't trust about him because he was given these revelations and he was the one that pretty much made the but Quran. Can we can see that Muslims are not praying to the Prophet in their prayer, like as I, a I, still, I see as it is, but as but you can we can we can obviously can see we can we can, we can get out the argument, but I still see no, as but it I is. just mean like when you say that they're praying to him when they're saying peace be upon you, O Prophet, they're asking God, and then they say, and upon all the rest. No, no, but it's literally saying, it says, peace be upon you, O Prophet. Yeah. It's like me saying, peace be upon you, brother, I'm talking to you. And then it says, why you gather I'm talking to you, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So when you say, peace be upon you, O Prophet, you're directly saying it to him. Yeah, because the, we believe the angel carries it to him. It's not, but, he doesn't have a divine. So he, you're, saying he, you're saying he's alive? Where is he? Uh, yeah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, it says that, you know, the Shuhada are not dead in their graves. Uh, the prophets, the earth doesn't take them. Like in Islamic normative theology, the idea... So you believe Muhammad's alive in the grave? In some liminal sense, yeah. Is there 72 virgins there as well? Uh, I'm not sure. Because you know, because basically when you, as so in the afterlife, you believe in the grave that you'll have a, a heaven and a, um, I just, I just a hell. I don't think that's relevant to our given question. Like if we're asking, is the prophet alive in the grave? According to normative Islamic theology, he's in a liminal sense alive in that he yeah. receives the blessings of the believer. Like I say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. My belief is that right now the angel Gabriel took it 
to the grave of the Prophet and presented it. But you know how you said it is Muhammad is alive and grave. Let's say he's alive. Let's say for the sake of argument, he's alive and grave, right? Yeah. So we we see in Islam, right, in the grave, right. I heard it many times before that you're that you're either tormented in the grave, right, or you'll you'll have a you'll have a paradise in the grave. Yeah. But in the grave, is there well, is there seventy two is there seventy two virgins in the grave? I'm not sure, but what I would say is like. The garden that's available to you is not like heaven itself. You get a you get a snapshot of the heaven that's available. Right? No, because 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 I have many times Muslims said like you're in the grave, you'll have, you'll you'll have the paradise. Well, you right? get a you get a vision of the paradise that's available. To you. Yeah, you don't have paradise itself until mm -hmm. you know after the reckoning and everything. Yeah, but I would just say yeah. this is not. It, I I I'll think. I so you see, so you're saying Muhammad is just like visioning heaven. Not visioning in the sense of like imagining, but that you get like literally from what uh, you get like a window, let's say. In which you can literally see. But how can Muhammad be in a grave and Isa is in heaven? Isa in the Quran, Allah saved him and brought him to heaven. But Muhammad is meant to be the greatest example, somebody I am to follow. But he's in the grave. Why is he not in heaven? Right? He's in heaven. But Jesus, we believe Jesus is in heaven. We follow Jesus. Our main head is Jesus Christ. And Jesus is in heaven. He always was and always was. Always was and always will. Well, in heaven. Jesus, according to Islamic normal theology, at one day will pass away. It's just not right now. Uh, I would also say Enoch, you know Idris, Enoch, Idris, yes. Yeah, yeah. He's alive in heaven. God turned. Oh no, no, we so we believe we believe in Christianity, there's like there's there's like levels. So like so we have we have heaven, then we have Hades. Yeah. So these prophets at that time they went to like a place called Hades. Well, in Islamic normal right? theology, Enoch is in heaven. heaven. So it's not exclusive to Jesus that he's the only prophet. But this is fair. Muhammad is meant to be the greatest example, right? Yeah. But I see other people much better than me. I see other. Jesus I see. Is no, dead. No, 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 no. Of course, he's dead. Everybody who yeah, lived this earth and I, die. Yeah, I see other people much better than Jesus in heaven. And it literally says much better than Jesus. Uh, no, 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 Jesus uh, than Muhammad in um, in the Bible and in the Quran. Like Isa was sinless. Muhammad yeah. was a sinner. Isa is coming back to judge the world. Muhammad is not. Like my, I have to look at who this man Isa is. Where was he a sinner? Muhammad, because yeah. when he's uh, so, I believe sin is anything that transgresses transgresses against God's commandments, right? And in the Quran it says, "Oh, Muhammad, ask Allah for the forgiveness of your sin." So what was that sin that Muhammad had committed? Are Are you aware of what the sin was? No, but it's, I, sin is something that you know. If, if you ask forgiveness from God, but I'm saying, like, do you know the context of that specific verse? A sin's a sin. Whether it's a minor or major, sin's still a sin. You still transgress against God. A minor, major thing is the best way to look at it. That's what Basically, Muslim said. That's what Muslim said. The person that was here earlier, I don't think constructed in the best fashion. A better way to look at it is that, like, say in Islamic law, if you're familiar, there's like five categories an action can have, right? Muba, mustahab, right? Mafru, haram, halal, whatever. Mm. There is a way to be outside of that. If you've ever heard of like adab, just generally, adab. so your idea of what your sinfulness is is relative to your morality. So if you know yeah, but, it's, it's, it, but, but still, he, you ask forgiveness from your parents because you might have done something wrong. And ask the forgiveness from Allah, yeah, by who is a God, right? who forgives sins. Like, you have definitely done something wrong. But Jesus was sinless. You know, it says this, right? The Prophet said, when any human being is born, Satan touches him at both sides of the, uh, of the body, except Jesus. What was so special about Jesus that even Muhammad admitted that he was that even Muhammad admitted that Satan could not touch Jesus. And brother, brother, will brother. become cool. Satan touched Je uh, Satan touched Muhammad. Satan had an effect on Muhammad. That hadith is Bukhari, Bukhari, Sahih is authentic. I think it's qualified by another hadith where the Prophet says, When I was born, the angels came and took on my heart and washed it before I ever committed any evil. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but yeah, how do I know these revelations really were hallucinations or not? Right? Because it says here, as I look at the context, as I was saying to you, as I was saying to you, I was saying to you, right? Magic was worked on Allah's yeah. messenger so that he used to think he has sexual relations while his wife, while he actually had not done. Is this a hadith? Yes, this is I, I, which, I cannot hadith? trust Bukhari and I cannot trust the man who is who was possessed by magic and him, him but hallucinating him uh, having sex with nine wives one go. But I couldn't trust the, the man. Isn't the point I, of it a consciousness that reflects that they know when he's under, say, black magic and when he's not? As in, to rely on this epistemic, yes. you have to verify that they had the epistemic certainty to tell when it's in place and when it's not in place. It so says it really Bukhari's, a, a Bukhari's authentic hadith. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying as soon as you rely on this, that says, like, imagine I'm like, you know, yesterday I was not feeling the best. But this is meant to be the greatest example. 
But Jesus, that's what I'm saying. So I'm Muhammad, problem, my argument. Muhammad, that, Satan had an effect on him. But Jesus, not Satan, nothing affected uh, him. Not wait, 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 so, so how can someone who's unaffected by Satan be an example for human beings? We're affected by because Satan. it shows us how to defeat how to defeat the temptation of the devil. How to defeat when Satan comes no, to you. So, Muhammad uh, couldn't defeat Satan. But shouldn't you be affected by it to, in order to defeat it? If you're immune to being affected by it, mm. then that's like a perfect thing that we can't help. Okay. So like if Jesus, okay, I'll just say this. I think there's a logical problem in the way you're constructing this and that. No, no, no. But come on. The epistemic certainty of saying that. Oh, I know when this person was, let's say, under black magic, and I know when he wasn't. It's kind of bizarre to say, yes. well, I can't trust him. Okay, let's say, let's say, okay, so let's say sometimes he was possessed by black magic, and sometimes he wasn't. How do I know the time he I mean, wasn't you possessed are by black? Relying on this to say that. But how do I know the times he yeah. wasn't possessed by black magic? What, yeah. like? Because I'm saying the really? text is consciously okay. aware of it, right? Like it's telling you literally at this time he was affected by black yeah. magic, right? Yeah, yeah. So presumably if the idea was that there's some epistemic uncertainty, it would either not mention this whatsoever or the, it would the, not the, have the main the conclusion we, the, of when it happens and when okay, it Okay, but the happen. main conclusion we have here is Muhammad, that black magic still had an effect on him, whether, yeah, sure. whether it was sometime later or sometime before, right? And another thing we have, right? When he's re yeah. receiving these revelations from the Angel Gabriel. Will you agree that black magic is not from Satan? That's a I believe from Satan. I believe from Satan. Okay, but if you believe something, you shouldn't like Islam is an inherently conceptually coherent system. You can't be like from my Christian perspective. Islam so do you believe wrong. God a, is gonna give you it's a, like a non Do you think God is gonna give you hallucinations of you having sex with nine wives in one go? Do you believe that in the I asked you first, come on, I asked you first. No, but I'm asking you a question that will help figure out why you think this is wrong. Do you think that in the Old Testament Lot slept with his two daughters? Okay, so as I said, the Old oh Testament, God, we don't follow all these other prophets, right? No, but I'm saying like, our main head is Jesus. The Old Testament is our main head is Jesus, Jesus yes. presumably, right? Yes. So Jesus in the Old Testament wrote that Lot had sex with his two daughters. Yes. And you believe that to be true? Yes. But and we don't. We that. don't believe God commanded Lot. Sure, I'm not. It was literally that. Lot's not daughter, that. the lustful yeah. intent. Well, yeah. They well, they not, managed. They, they tried to have sex with his father. God commanded Muhammad to be affected by. But I'm saying, did Jacob wrestle with the angel Gabriel? We believe Jacob wrestled with God. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we believe God comes down to his creation and interacts with them. The, light, the, the way how we wrestle with sin, the way how we wrestle with temptation, God wrestles with Jacob. Things, right? Insofar as you believe all those things, do you think it's really unreasonable to say that the prophet initially was uncomfortable with the revelation, but then later became comforted by it? Like, is that such an unreasonable belief? Okay, okay. My main point to you was, my main point to you was, right, so with the black magic thing, right? So when he was possessed, right? At one time, right? He said he was he started hallucinating him having sex with nine wives, right? And these other revelations he said he was receiving from Allah. How do I know whether it was from Allah or whether it was him hallucinating him having visions from the angel? How do I know? Because you look at the claim. I will I would just say claim, like, test yeah. the claim. Mm. It's not even relevant like even if that wasn't in the text, you would still have good reason to believe like, oh, it could just be a hallucination. Like it's not a strong argument from the text to say, oh, the text said the prophet was affected by black magic. Therefore, this text is possibly from black magic. You could say that he's hallucinating, even if it's not but, in the text. But we can know God. God is not the type to do this. God is not the type no, to give somebody hallucinations like you're constructing your of them having sex with nine wives in one go. As soon as you rely on the Quran to say, oh, the Quran said it was black magic, you're taking it as an epistemically certain source is what I'm saying. But then you're using it inconsistently. So no, it's no, better no. for you to just be like, I don't believe anything the Quran says. This is a hadith. Anybody that, this is a hadith. Yeah, or the hadith. Like, as soon as you rely on an epistemically certain source, you can't rely on it inconsistently. You get what I mean? You can't be like, I believe in the first half it's of the hadith, hadith and not the second half of the hadith. So into, you should just reject it outright. But you, like, I don't believe in hadith, no, but this, I don't this, believe in this, Quran. This is what I'm saying. All wrong. This is why I put my trust in Jesus. Because all throughout the Bible, we see Jesus' perfection. Wait, 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 he said, I am the life, I am the resurrection. He literally proved, um, he I'm literally proved his words by resurrecting from the dead. I'm just saying, it's you don't follow the Jesus we follow. You follow, you follow Isa, as salam. we follow Jesus Christ of the Bible. You just, trying, you just said the same thing in two languages. You follow Isa of the, Isa of the Quran. The Isa of the Quran, the Isa of the Quran is different to the Bible. This guy here is shit. We have a nice conversation, man. We have a nice conversation. I hear you, this guy, I listen, look at there must be speak to they and they are they there. His his agenda's changing. I love you, brother. Brother, I love you. I don't love you. Love I love you for the sake of Jesus. Love your mom. I love you. I love you for the sake of Jesus, brother. Okay, let me say something. Let me explain something to you. See this guy here. Brother, take him, man. Yeah, yeah, piss off. Take no, no, brother, no, brother, take it. Brother, take it. Yeah, brother, yeah, take yeah, it, brother. I want to shake your hand. I love you. I love you. I love you as well. No, don't love you. Love I love you. Right. Love you. Thank you, brother. He wasn't taking him away, was he? Huh? He took him away from the conversation. Yeah, yeah, no, he's just a hacker. Like, he always comes in, man.
Now, so I was saying to the, um, the, these people about trusting Muhammad again, like trusting a man possessed by black magic, how Muhammad was a sinner, Jesus wasn't, how we see throughout the Bible, Jesus pretty much defeated every single temptation. We see his perfection through his words and Jesus proving these claims. And yeah, this, this, the person couldn't back up the claims where Muhammad wasn't possessed by black magic. I cannot trust a man who was bewitched, who had hallucinations of him having sex with nine wives. How can I trust his other uh, revelations whether these were hallucinations or not? So that was the main topic I have with the brother. He was very polite. He was very polite as well. But then the heckler came in. So I just, I love the heckler. I love everybody. I love my Muslim brothers. And we just have to close it down there. Uh, it's the, the hadith black, black magic. I want to take the, the, the source. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Uh, okay. You said you can't trust Muhammad because you say he's a sinner. What's, no, 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 no. So when somebody is asked for forgiveness from Allah, Allah says to Muhammad, ask forgiveness for your sins. Can you forgiveness for Christ? Yeah, for sins. But Jesus, he had no sin. He had no sin. Yeah. Okay, so you, you believe that all the messages before Jesus yes. came with the same message as Jesus? We Okay, so in the Bible, we have a different perspective. So the, we, say these prophets came to the nation with, with a message and yeah. they came to pave the way for Jesus Christ to come. Yeah, so they came yeah. with the same they, message. They, they came, the main message was to pave the way for Jesus, right? So, but we don't look at them as a main authority. Our main authority is Jesus. I don't know about main authority, but at the end of the day, they all come with the same message. We have no, it, these, un, it, these, will be, it will be unfair for no one. No, no, they, come, they, come, they came with different messages yeah. for different nations because yeah, there different was different nations, nations at the time. The same message. So, what's the message of Islam? You can't have just one message. One God. One God. So, you believe Abraham, Muhammad, the all these followers came with the same message? Abraham, Noah, Joseph, Jesus all came saying, Don't pray to the creation, pray to the creator. Okay. Come, with, come pray to one God. That's not the message. Why, was that, so, why is that not the message? That's not the message. That's, message. The main message of Muhammad was to believe that there's one God, to believe there's Allah. Yeah, that's what's the point of him coming when there's already other prophets who have done it? Well, that's like saying, what, what's the point of Moses? Because we, we, we believe in different messages. They came with different messages. You believe in the same message. These prophets came with different messages to, to different nations and to different people. The whole of humanity. Every few, every few thousand years, every thousand years or whatever, the, a messenger will come preaching the same message to a different nation. But what's the point in preaching the same message, man? Like, if it's, if it's ready, if the message is ready the same, it has not been changed, right? It's not been changed. There's no proof of being changed. Because Islam... No proof of the Bible being changed. No, no, no. There's no... Okay, let's, let, let me go to this. There's no proof. There is proof. There's no proof in history, right, that Islam was there before 600 AD. So what was the message before then? By proof of Islam, so you, you, you know what Islam means? Islam means submission to one God. Okay, so it, are you saying Satanists are Muslims? Because Satanists submit to God, Satanists no, no, believe they, to Satan. they believe Lucifer is God in their context. Do you believe they're Muslims? They don't believe Satan is God because if you believe in Satan, then you believe that there is, but God Satan is a God as well in the Quran. Satan is God in the Quran as well. God of what? Well, it says in the Quran, Ilah, which means a God. So Satan is a God well, in the Quran as well. Say that. Get it out. It's already there. It's saying Allah doesn't. Because if you believe in Satan, then you automatically believe in God creating Satan. And you're choosing to follow Satan instead of God. But you said, right? You said, anybody who, anybody speaks to God, God, one creator, God, yes, one creator. The creator okay. of the universe. Yes. And some people believe Satan is their God. So does that mean they are Muslims? No, no. Just, okay, there's a difference between believing something is God and believing in God. Does that make sense? Pardon? Sorry. If you if, if you take okay, the difference between believing in a god and taking something and saying that is your god. So how do we know which? So how do we know your god? Satan. How do we know your god is the one that? You must have worshipped. No, no, no. this, this is a football team, so it's like my guy versus your guy, and we're gonna fight. But you just said a so god. A god is a supernatural. Yes. Satan is a supernatural person as well. Yeah, He's a supernatural but, but, being. Even Satan must know that Satan was created by God. Yes, but Satan's Satan still a supernatural, right? He's still a god. He's still yeah, a god. Wait, wait, wait. There's angels are supernatural. Mm. Your consciousness is supernatural. I don't believe a angels are supernatural. I believe, no, believe angels I, are supernatural. I believe they are given the authority by God. But, but, I, I'm, but that doesn't negate the fact that they're supernatural. Ain't they supernatural they, because they're metaphysical? So we're, we're not super, brother. Those who are given supernatural um, these authority to do things by God, they're not supernatural. God has given these things to them. Supernatural, Satan's belief, uh, the devil, wait, wait, is wait, supernatural wait, wait, on its own. 
what are we doing on its own? So, God, okay. God's at the top. He creates angels, he creates uh, devils, he creates yeah, jinns, he creates... Okay, whatever. so you know Satanists. So they all come... Satanists? Satanists. Yes. For you to be a Satanist, you have to acknowledge that Satan exists. And if you acknowledge that Satan exists, then you acknowledge that God created Satan. Some Satanists... Oh no, some, okay, some Satanists don't, don't believe God exists. Satan, God, some Satanists don't believe God exists. They just believe Satan exists. So I'm saying to you, are these Satanists Muslims as well? In your, in your time no, of context? Okay, thank you. So not everybody who submits to God is a Muslim. Was Jesus a Muslim? Yes. How? Because he came preaching one God. But in he your says, Quran, I, I alone can do nothing. Okay. Uh, nothing without the will of the Father. Okay. My Father. Okay. Okay. My Father and your Father. My yeah. God and your God. Okay. I'll explain that. God Allah is, Allah, is Allah Father to Muhammad? Jesus never called Allah the Father. He called it Jesus calls our God the Father. father in yeah. Islam, Jesus never calls God the Father, does he? Yeah. So you believe Jesus so called Allah Allah? Allah. Father do in the Bible, Jesus calls God the Father, not Allah. But do you know what God is in Aramaic? Ilaha. Huh? Ilaha. Ilaha Allah. Yes. yes. No, 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 no. It means Ilaha, yes? No, but Ilaha. Jesus. Ilaha is Aramaic. Okay. Allah is Aramaic. Okay. 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 But yeah. can, you, yeah. can you give me any. In you Arabic say. You say. But you say. You Muslims have uh, added this. Added this. Added. added, added, added you language. made it Allah, not Ilah. But you said. Okay. Arabic, oh, man. okay. God is Ilaha. 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 Yeah. In Arabic is Ilah. Ilah, yeah. And Ilah, yeah. And they're saying that Muslims changed it to Allah. They added a little thing to make it different. But it's the same word. The Shahada translated. No, okay, okay. No, no. But you said Jesus was a Muslim. That's like saying if I say God, then oh, I came and I changed it. Like, but then Okay, because so when 30, Jesus Christ, okay. verse 11 when, and 12, but when, Je says, when Jesus Christ was in his humanity, he was limited. Yeah. He was, he was limited, Muslim. right? No, How can no, Jesus no. be Muslim then? Brother, How can Jesus be Muslim? Brother, when okay. Quran says so Muhammad can you show the, the right, first so Muslim. When he said permission, can you show me the verse? He said, ask for permission. Define Muslim. No, but I need to know which verse you're on about. Because are you on about, are you on about when Jesus said, not my one, your will be done? Muslim are the terrorists. Are you on about when he said, not my will, and your will be done? Muslim are... What are you on about? Because he were... I can do nothing without the will of the Father. Yeah, it's because we believe in the Trinity. They, okay, they the each, of the, Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they work together. They, 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 can, do, they can do nothing the without each other. Who, so the Father can't Muhammad do anything without and Allah. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Where does it, where does okay. it say that? Is your daughter because, a terrorist? Because My daughter, they are not Muslim, they are Muslim and they are not foolish, foolish like okay. Muslims are. Foolish. So in John, uh, uncle, uncle, please. Uh, please uh, uh, so in John, so in John chapter one, in John chapter one, right? Yes, sir. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with oh, God. Okay, and, then I'm going to show you, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made. So we can see, without the Son, nothing was made. The Father could not make the creation without the Son. So we can see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were in unique creation, were in unique unison in creating the world. In the book of Colossians, where, where, where is the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit. The, so the Holy Spirit proceeds. You have the, the, the Father yes. and the Word, and you say the Word is yes. the Son. So in the, okay. So where is the Holy okay, Spirit? Okay. So in the book, in the in the book of Genesis, right? It says the. So where's it going? Yeah, and Jesus, also, also, Jesus uh, so in in but let me say about the Holy Spirit, right? So in the Holy Spirit, in the Book of Genesis, the Holy Spirit was hovering over the waters. So we can see the Holy Spirit had a part in the creation as well, and the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. He is the breath of the Father, and the, the Bible, yes. So the Holy Spirit in, the, in Psalms 33, verse six, we can see the Holy Spirit is the breath of the Father. So we can see in Psalms 30. Uh, let's get Psalms up. My question is, why do you rely on this? Why do you think this is like the line to, the one who to follow? Okay, so I'll give. I'll, okay. I'll get, I'll, you call another, another, so I'll, 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 I promise because it. Because this, so in Psalm 33, it says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens are made. The word is Christ. The steady host by the breath of his mouth. So we can see the Holy Spirit, Father, and Son in creation in Psalm 33, verse 6. Allah okay. and well, what they you say? are okay. the one who says well, more importantly why is this uh, uh, but Jesus never said Jesus it's liable never because said. we have many many manuscripts Jesus never and there were many copies being made over and over and over again so if there so, is something the so we have writings from the first century and there's all tradition as well so the oldest one you have is like 400 years old no 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 so we had we had church father writings from the from, Greek. from the first from the first century Right. Translation. Yeah, is yeah. So it was in it was in first century. Jesus spoke in Greek, by the way. So we he spoke Greek, Aramaic, and Hebrew. The 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 Romans who pretty much persecuted Christ, they mostly spoke in Greek, right? You can these scholars. 
the ones he like, you know, um, pretty much stoned him and stuff like that. Pontus Pilate, he mostly spoke in Greek. He must speak in Greek. Romans, their main language must have been Greek and Latin. So is there not a single contradiction? Then? It's not a contradiction. No, no, no. no but there's no, there's not a single contradiction. Okay, okay. So we believe, right? As the Bible, we believe. As, as, so you said, why is it reliable? As I said, we got many manuscripts, and they're making copies and copies and copies of these and manuscripts. Many of them are. So different. if there was something that was not meant to be on there, right? We would have known. But why do some Bibles have chapters missing than other Bibles? Okay, so you know the Birmingham manuscript, right? The Birmingham manuscript. There's only Surah Taha and Surah Kafir. The Birmingham manuscript was made and uh, was uh, carbon dated to around 680 AD, right? Then later on, as later on time by the past, you have the Sunday manuscript, the Tabkazi manuscripts, right? And then you have more additions to it, right? The same way with these um, with these manuscripts, they're they're written in papyrus, they're written in leaves. Not everything you have is gonna you know it's gonna survive, right? But the later on, they passed down. They they were passing down, right? They were because because there was also an oral tradition, right? They were preaching the message orally. Or, 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 or there are still Bibles today with whole chapters missing than other Bibles. Whole chapter missing? Whole chapters. I think you're on about like um, 7, 758. I, I don't know. But this, is, this is because like some people believe, because some people believe these were not only original manuscripts, right? Mm -hmm. And because as I was saying to you, we believe these manuscripts, they, we were written papyrus. Not everything's going to survive. Mm -hmm. But we had an oral tradition and they were later passed down, right? Because these apostles, they were living, they were passing down the tradition from the church fathers. And these church fathers then went on to pretty much you know, write it down on um, on copies. They're writing it down again, 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 and because they obviously had, probably heard the message later on. For example, about John, about the chapter of the adulterous woman. They probably, I believe, that was meant to be in the Bible, and because I believe that message um, was not there in the you know first. So, so you believe that Jesus like came, and told that story, and so yeah, I believe, you believe there's a gospel yeah, of Jesus. So I believe, I believe the message was always there, but because they're written in papyrus, not not everything's not going to survive. Like you had the Birmingham manuscript, not everything in there survived. You have Surah Kaf in there and Surah Taha in there, right? Yeah. And then well, later on, because we had an oral tradition, it passed down. Promising. And then later on, they memorized it and then they wrote it down. Yeah, because the, uh, the initial way of uh, preserving the Quran. Orally. orally. Yes, we had a Bible. Or by, all the ancient horses were produced orally. They were producing, they, they were talking about it first, then they were writing it down. And uh, as I said, like within the first century, uh, before the Bible was written, they were they were preaching the gospel by by the mouth, right? And sometimes you're not gonna write everything down, and sometimes things may not survive. But later on, throughout the years, because some people may have memorized memorized they or heard something, they wrote it down. And these were scribes who wrote it down. And sometimes these scribes were facing persecutions, so which is why they were there, there were things they may have you know mistranslated, may have forgot to write something. But the message of Christ, the message of Christ is what we look for. The message of Christ, the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ has never been changed. That same message has been preached since the first century. The message of Jesus so, dying for your sins so you believe, and that he's also... So you believe in, in Islam, Jesus was never crucified, but it makes it appear that he was crucified, right? That message came 600 years later. Then the original message, which was he was crucified and raised back from the dead. That was the original message that was being preached. What is the source of that information? Because, so, it's like, okay. because it's not like Jesus came and said, I'm going to die. He did. Right? I can show you some verses. I'll get up. Was well, that written after? after no, before, so Jesus, because we don't even have the gospel of Jesus. We don't believe the gospel. We, we, we the believe gospel in the of the of the. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's we don't believe in the actual gospel of Jesus. We believe in the gospel. Don't believe that Jesus. We believe the gospel. in the gospel of Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. And uh, these don't were. Believe that Jesus came with the gospel. No, no, he came with it. So before, as I said to you, man, in the ancient traditions, yeah. but even the Old Testament, these messages they were first produced orally. Yeah. Then they were written down. And by the time Jesus had produced his, because Jesus Christ was living in a full of persecution world where they were per persecuting him, he could, not have, he could not have wrote these things. So his disciples, when he went to heaven, the Holy Spirit came upon these disciples and they gave the teachings of Jesus to the disciples, which they then wrote down. So what's the point of the New Testament? Okay, um, if so, the Holy Spirit helped these guys to write the Old Testament, then what's the point? But here of it is, right? So, it, it, so you know how you, have, you know how you said Jesus didn't want to die for our sins. It literally said Jesus literally said before dying for sin, he said, "Just as a Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give His life as a ransom for many." There's literally, literally Jesus saying that He will be given His life for us. In in, in which? In Matthew twenty twenty eight. Okay, but uh, <laughs> but this is a claim from Matthew that Jesus said that yes and also in in, um, in Matthew 26 verse 28 let's get that up I want to show you Matthew 
So you know how you said about the new covenant, what's the point of having a new covenant, right? So the old covenant, that was there for the, so the old covenant there, that was like a temporary law. And that was there for like, for the, the Jewish people. And because we could not fulfill these laws, right? Jesus Christ has to come and fulfill it. And because he fulfilled these old laws, we do not... By fulfilling a law. So, okay, so you know how you have all these old commandments, like keeping the Sabbath and everything? Like don't eat pork? Yeah, yeah. And because that. we couldn't do it, we are sinners. Our flesh cannot do this. We break it every day. We would have broken it every single day. So Jesus Christ came as a substitute. He came and fulfilled these laws by doing it himself. And now because he's fulfilled it, we, so, we, so because he came, he's fulfilled it, we don't have to do it anymore because so, he's done it for us. Wait, so what do, you, what do you mean by fulfilling? Like he came and he followed the laws? He came and he broke the laws? Like, yeah, he came, he came and followed all the laws and did them perfectly. But you know how you... And because he did it perfectly, you no longer have to follow it anymore. Okay, so Jesus said, when Jesus said, I have not come to abolish the law, but to... Um, where's he gone? He has said, I have not come to abolish the law, but to, to fulfill the law. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not a single dot of this law will pass away till it has been fulfilled. Yeah. The Old okay? Testament. Yes. So we can see it has been fulfilled because he has gone up to heaven. And when Jesus Christ said, it is finished, it is done on the cross, it is him related to the work of the old covenant. So what gives, so what gives Paul the authority to come and say, hey, you know what, we don't, ha we don't have to follow this anymore. But we, Jesus we, said it. We, Jesus, Jesus well, yeah, said, but okay. Jesus, but Jesus came and said, don't eat pork, for example. And 400 years later, Paul is saying, hey, we don't need to follow that anymore. So this is what Jesus, in Jesus, so why, in, why, 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 okay, we, get, why are we trusting Paul but, okay, so much? So because Paul got these teachers from the disciples who were with Jesus. But and he, Jesus, he was 400 years after the disciples, no? Paul, no. Paul literally, Paul literally, probably. Or many years after. Paul he didn't meet all the disciples. No, no. Paul literally became a Christian 30 years after Jesus went to heaven. So Paul, Paul was probably like a five year old kid when Jesus was, like, you know, okay. existing. But here it says, right? Jesus says in Matthew 26, verse 28, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many, of the, for, the, for, the, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. So we can see the covenant. The forgiveness of sins is the covenant. And he is the covenant. In the Old Testament, we can see Jesus is the covenant. So by accepting Jesus Christ, we are a new, we are following a new covenant, which is the sacrifice. So by accepting that new covenant, we have the forgiveness of sins, which we did not have before. Understand? So sin couldn't be forgiven before Jesus. So, okay, so sin could not, they could not take us to heaven. Uh, forgiveness of sin could not take us to heaven. But because so these people, so these, so these, if you, if you sin, and no, because so these were temporary sacrifices. These were, um, these people were making, right? So what, what, what sacrifice? So like goats, animals, and stuff like that. Yeah, so, oh, because they, yeah. they would sacrifice. So, like so an yeah, so these, these, so it says in the scripture, the um, shedding of animals of like cannot truly forgive sins. It's only Christ that can forgive our sins. So these were these uh, sacrifices they were making. They were to reconcile our relationship with God at the moment. And when, you all, when, when all these people in the Old Testament died, they went to a place called Hades. They couldn't go to heaven because they weren't perfect. So Christ had to come down and he became our advocate, right? So when we accept Christ, when we accept his blood, God does not look at us, but he looks at Christ in us because Christ lives inside of us. When we accept Christ, he, um, he lives inside of us. So by accepting him, we can have our advocate, our lawyer, Christ, to grant us everlasting life. You get that? Uh, this, uh, I, I get your perspective, mm. but this is he relies heavily on if the Bible is reliable enough. I told you, we even we have many, many. We have external sources from church fathers. I, I, there are contradictions even today. Okay, so you know, so the main foundation of Christianity is about the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know that, right? That's a, that's the main foundation of Christianity. My foundation of Christianity. The main. But, so it, okay, I know Catholics. Yeah. Who read the Old Testament? And they're like, from reading this, you can tell that Jesus, that's subjective, is, that isn't it? Jesus is not equal to the Father. That's, sub that's subjective, isn't it? So what do you mean? Subjective, like that's, that, that's opinion based. That's what science, so, nice. so you have many people who have different opinions, like you have Shia, so you Sunni, stuff like that, right? But as I said, so the main foundation of Christianity is based on the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. And the resurrection and crucifixion was attested by many witnesses. You have Apostle John, who has a chain of narration from Polycarp, from Ignatius, from Irenaeus. These are church fathers, these are historians who witnessed John, who witnessed people, right? They strong went to die for their faith. Why would someone die for believing a lie? Why is someone going to die by preaching a message, right? That, that's not true. Right, and so then they one went because they to face. Okay. Okay. okay, so okay, so these apostles. Why is somebody going to die for a lie? These apostles, they pretty much died for preaching. They pretty much died for preaching that they saw Jesus come back from the grave. 
Why is somebody going to die for a big lie like that? I think we'll close it down as well. Okay. I think in a similar way where you said... Because uh, these, these apostles died for believing a big lie, apparently. Well, but they, but why they, why but was that? could be hallucinating, right? So over 500 witnesses, you should be many people who are hallucinating at once. I believe that's, that's highly unreliable. That's highly unreliable. Highly, highly unlikely. What's up? So, but also, like... Bro, I'm going. I don't want to stop here, man. I want to just go now. But take care, man. Nice meeting you. Uh, are you here next week? Yeah, yeah. Nice to be there. I want to see what's happening. Yeah.